Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths so with Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this video we'll be looking at PowerVC version 131. Part 5 we're looking at cloud metering. This is gathering the stats so that we could produce bills for our user departments, our user projects or perhaps tenants. We've been using this chart to track our progress through this series, parts 1 to 4. There's one thing less, so this is what we're going to do in part 5. We'll be looking at that metering data that can be used for chargeback. It warns us that it's a REST API which is particularly tricky to use if you haven't done this sort of thing before. So metering is about monitoring resource use. Perhaps you want your users to pay for the amount of compute power, CPU, memory disks that they're using. If you're hosting multiple tenants, then you do want a nice accurate way of determining how much they should be charged. Perhaps you also charge your internal user departments. Even if you don't, it's good to know which departments, which projects in PowerVC terms are using the most resources. If they're static, then that's good. If they're growing rapidly or out of control, then there's something that needs to be done about that in the future. In the current release of PowerVC 131, there's no way of generating invoices from this data. We just get the raw data. That may change in the future. Now, we were warned in the announcement that the metering information would be via the REST API. And it is documented there, but it's very thin on the ground. Unless you're an absolute guru at REST APIs, the um, OpenStack and Silumeter formats and how they operate, then you are going to get stuck just as I was. So I found it quite challenging. Very little information about the actual information you get back in the actual manual page. The data is extracted using various tools to use that REST API. I found that if you want to write a script to regularly do something, then the curl command is the best way to do that. You get a text output back. You can also use uh, Python if you're a uh, familiar with using Python as a language. Um, and also, if you want a graphical user interface to explore the REST API and work out what's in there and what you want to do with it, then the Firefox and Chrome have um, applications in their browsers that can actually help you out there. That's not very good, though, as far as I could work out if you want to do a regular uh, script to actually do some billing information. So what we need, really, is rather than a fairly terse manual page, is a worked example of how to get the data out in a sensible format for us to produce a spreadsheet. So from my experience, we're going to use the curl command. Uh, that is already installed on the PowerVC host, the server itself. That's the course is running uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.1 or above. It provides the output in JSON format, which in my humble opinion is one of the worst formats on the planet. Um, extreme duplication in the data. 99% of the data it returns is absolutely pointless. And um, for example, if you ask for 50 time snaps and uh, 50 sets of numbers, maybe that represents about 1k of useful data. Well, it gives you back 45k. And just to make life interesting, it does it all on one line. So it makes it very difficult to interpret what you actually got back. You also have to do with large hexadecimal uh, numbers. If you've got a project called uh, production, then you have to look it up using the OpenStack command and you get a 32-bit great big hexadecimal number and it needs that returned into the curl script to actually specify which project you want data about. Now the REST API and the JSON format is okay if you're running some sort of programming language that understand these things and you can then develop your own billing application. But if you just want something simple, it's quite a difficult task. So from my experiments for project data, in PowerVC, you'd have lots of projects um, for different tenants or user departments. That is uh, taken every 10 minutes or so. Uh, think of it as configuration data. This isn't live usage. It's how many CPUs are allocated to the virtual machines of a project. You can get the data at project level or user data. I've assumed that project data is the one we want. I don't think many projects will have lots of users that can do the self-service, so we want to group all the users together into their projects. The data that is available is total vCPU. Now, I immediately thought virtual CPU, but no, they actually mean the entitled capacity. Um, but okay, we can, we can live with that, I guess. Uh, the total memory is the... RAM actually in all the virtual machines added up. Uh, that's in megabytes. The total volumes is the disks, but that's in gigabytes. And uh, I'll ignore any thin provisioning, it's not aware of that. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about the, how the script works. I'll just give you the basics in here. At the end, I'll give you a web link to the full explanation and uh, you can download the script. 
Before you start using a REST API, you have to effectively log in and get a token, which you then use for any subsequent calls to the REST API. If you're a C programmer, this is like opening a file and getting a file descriptor, then use the file descriptors for any subsequent I.O. So this first call up in here to the uh, this port and this authorization tokens pseudo website is calling into OpenStack Keystone. You're giving it in this file your username, password and the project you want to connect to and it gives you back this token. Then we're going to use the curl API to go into a different port, and this is the Celio meter. This is where that captures the uh, performance uh, stats, the uh, configuration stats that we want to uh, use uh, for our billing. And in here, we can see that we have total vCPU. We could change that to total memory or total volumes to get the RAM and the disk space. Now, we can actually get Celio meter to do a lot of the work for us by adding some other things. So what we do in here is, we actually want um, all the stats um, pulled together on a day-by-day -day basis because that makes sense for a billing. So in the bottom in here we have the field is a timestamp and greater than a particular timestamp. And so this is a date, time and uh, details. And then we're going to say the period is, this is the number of seconds in a day, so we'll um, add up everything. Uh, for on a daily basis and we want the aggregate to be a maximum what the maximum configuration on any particular day then we're telling it also that when we actually get this data we only want a specific project and we've looked up the project id so we're saying that project id has to be equal to this particular field and then we get the information back um, that is condensed the way we want on a day by day for a particular project starting at a particular time that will be midnight that day and then these um, 86,400 seconds later will be the following day. So what do we get back? Well, we get one line full of this stuff, 45K or something uh, back in my case. And we can see here we've got the timestamp and the data. So here's the timestamp uh, for this particular item. And then here's the actual data for. And the rest of it in this highlighted white record is completely uh, uh, not interesting to us. And I couldn't find a way of switching that off. So we have to break this into uh, records, then we have to uh, pull out the information we actually want uh, and sort it. So what sort of output do we want? Well, comma separated values, so we can pull it into a spreadsheet would be good. Do that on a daily basis because that's a sensible way of charging. For each project in, in the Power VC that is controlling, then we want the CPU and the memory and the disks in terms of the entitled CPUs, the megabytes of memory and the gigabytes of disks. Then we want to add in sort of cost for each item, so the uh, cost of a CPU day, the cost of a megabyte of memory per day, and the cost of a gigabyte of disk per day, and then we can actually get it to, to add up the totals for us, so we can quickly get moving on to a total figure for billing. So here's an example of the spreadsheet we're going to output. Uh, we've got some heading information in here. These are the costs per day for the CPU memory and disks. You will totally disagree with what we put in here. It was a very rough guess based on a sort of three-year use of a machine and how much they actually cost. Uh, be careful that the megabytes of memory and the gigabytes of disks, uh, so there's a thousand uh, order of difference in there. Then we want to do the uh, cost of the CPU in here for each day. We have the amount of CPU, the cost, and then how much that actually costs in total per day. And the similar things for the memory in megabytes and the disks in gigabytes. So this is what we're trying to aim at. We've booted the machine now that's running the PowerVC itself as a virtual machine. It's running 7.1 or above will do. Um, the lscpu command gives you some nice output about what sort of process you got. This is a Power 8 processor. Big Endian. It's got some things around the wrong way in here. It's actually four cores. SMT8, that's correct. So I end up with uh, 32 CPU core threads. Uh, not CPUs, but uh, there we are. And down here, this is IBM gobbledygook for an S824, so that's okay. Now, in my directory in here, I've just got the one file. This is the uh, command we're going to use. going to quickly edit this just to show a few things, not to go through it in detail. That would take two hours. Pretty complicated. Uh, some sensors and alts and grips and things. But if we just look at the uh, file in here, um, the arguments coming in are the project, the user and password. The user and password are as supplied to uh, the Red Hat operating system uh, user. And the project is of course the PowerVC project. 
down here we actually have the CPU, RAM and disk costs. These are the costs per item, CPU, um, per day. And here's the start date of the report. Now, that will do for now. It will slowly build up over the rest of the year. Um, but maybe January the 1st, you actually want to do it from January the 1st, for example. Okay, so let's go and run this actual command. I'll clear the screen. I've got a project uh, called 6, and my user is PowerVC that we created in an earlier project, and my password is secret, of course. So it's reminding you it's doing Project 6 in this particular user. These are the costs, so that you remember that. They're put into the little spreadsheet as well, so you can understand what's going on. It's now doing the, the curl, and the curl is supplying it a whole load of uh, data. Now what we've done, we've processed that, and we've put the results into uh, this particular file. So if, if we vi that comma separated value files, the, the name of it includes the project name and the user you used to get the data. And then we have the output. And so at the top in here, we have the uh, CPU stats. Here's the memory. And below here, we have the data. I put an end of file at the end, just so that you know that it actually completed. All right, now that file will now pull into a spreadsheet and you can see what it's all about. So I'm here on Windows 7. I've created the little file here. Um, my Windows 7 is set up so if it sees a comma separated values file, it knows that it wants to start off Excel to actually pull this into a spreadsheet. So I'll just double click that and I'll change the size of the window so it fits. Okay. And here we go, it's put it all in. All those commas have been used to put it into different tabs and things. This looks a bit scary, but that just says that it doesn't fit. So we slide this over a bit and we can see the dates in here. And I'll get the data right down so you can actually see it on nearly as one screen. So we have the, the values uh, per CPU per day. You know, that's a CPU entitlement capacity. Um, and here's the actual stats for each day, how much CPU, memory in megabytes, disk in gigabytes. Uh, and then, um, then it's using the uh, that to calculate their price. If I go here and oh, they've changed this interface so many times, it drives you nuts and that. Um, okay, I want to do a sum of that column like that. Hit return, and so it's saying for these three days the total price, if you like, for the CPU memory and data adds up to two thousand seven hundred and two euro dollar pounds. OK, so now we can do billing on this. Now, normally, of course, you'd have loads and loads of days for each day of the month as we build up uh, more records. Now, I just want to quickly show you another way of loading it into a spreadsheet. Um, if you haven't got it automatically set up to handle a comma separated file, if I go here and close this, and, uh, no, I don't want to save that, um, then we want to go in here and open it. And this will work pretty much the same for most other spreadsheets, uh, including you know, the open source ones on, on Linux and things. So we're going to open in here. <laughs> yeah, okay, I find, yeah, here's my file. Ah! It can't see. That's because it's looking for these Excel type uh, files. So if we uh, open this up, we can see in it oh thousands and thousands of types that Microsoft has invented over the years. Some of them are open source, but here is this comma separated values. It's known as a text file. Okay, if we click on that, ah, now it suddenly finds our file, and now we can open it. Um, sometimes there's a uh, lots of extra sophisticated ways of opening the file with different separators and all sorts of things but uh, this would work as we have a very simple just comma separated values in here so we open this up and we'll get it as before Oop, we need to stretch this tab over a little bit so we can see the dates okay now hopefully that will get you going pulling in the data and uh, billing your customers some money that's always nice to make some money isn't it before we go, a couple of little bits of information just want to make it very clear. Uh, the report that the meter script is going to produce is per project. If you want to do per user, you'd have to change the script. It's also hard coded in the script that it has to run on the PowerVC machine itself, the one that's running PowerVC as a service. That's because it's making use of the OpenStack command. It's also hard coded in there the uh, cost per CPU, RAM, and disk 
uh, day and the start date is in there but all of those you could change with the editor no problem um, and then it's going to assume that you're going to pull that data into a spreadsheet and then you'll produce the bill or the invoice that's not automatic next up this is the place to get it it's on my Air expert blog so if you use tinyurl.airexpert look for the article called powervc131 cloud edition metering um, the URL is here but I'll also put this on the YouTube website so you should be able to click on that another one in here the second one um, we can change with the power VC config command how much data uh, Celometer actually saves here it's 90 days or obviously 2160 hours um, after that it will throw the data away so if you collecting reports every month that's okay you will have some back level reports if you want to do the whole year for example um, or you could extend the amount of data it's actually going to store another thing in here is if you got curl statements that are using instead of v2 meter it uses v2 samples in here this is a completely different sort of data confused the, the dickens out of me for quite a while until i, I sussed that out um, this data is actually utilization data for the servers that PowerVC are controlling and I think is extracting this data from the HMC and we know there are other tools that can extract the same data but it's nice to do that in PowerV itself and you actually get a machine type and the model number and then the serial number of the machine and how much the CPU is actually been using over different time periods uh, but that's a different script a different time we'll have a look at that if you've learned something in this video or enjoyed it uh, please click on the liked button below just gives us an indication that uh, you actually like what we're doing and we'll go and do some more We'll finish with my usual advert. Don't forget, if you go to Tony Urel, Air Expert, then you can find the script.